So now that I'm confident that my model is verified, um, I would like to open my um, initial model, which was my current policy model that has the original parameters in it, so the triangular distributions and uh, different uh, processing times for cold and um, hot uh, customers uh, in my system, as you can see. And I would like to do more experimentation and analysis uh, with, this, with this model. So what I'd like to do is to uh, run an experiment, but this time, um, instead of uh, running the experiment and looking at the pivot grid, I would like to use something uh, we call uh, simio responses or experiment responses. So, um, uh, so what I can do is go ahead and uh, define uh, experiment responses in my experiment table. And what uh, the responses do for me is that um, I can display my output statistics um, uh, in my experiment table without uh, having to go to the pivot grid to see uh, the values. So I'm going to uh, define uh, some of the responses that I uh, care about in this um, uh, lab. So the first one is time and system, I'm going to call it TIS. And um, in order to put the expression for the time and system, I can use the expression builder. So I know the time and system is related to my customer entity. Um, so I can hit the period and then I can go to population. And what I want is uh, time and system. And I want the average time and system for my uh, customer entity. So as you can see, the expression is customer.population.timeandsystem.average. Uh, the next uh, response that I would like to add is uh, number and system, I'm going to call it NIS, and the expression for the number and system is again going to be customer dot uh, population uh, dot uh, number and system, number and system, and again uh, I'm interested in the average value here. Um, the next response that I'm going to define is the utilization of my bread station, so I'm going to call it bread util. And for my uh, station, I'm going to look for the name of the station. So I'm going to look for bread meat. And then um, in the list that is uh, given to me by Simio, I need to go to capacity, hit the period. And what I'm looking for is the scheduled utilization. So again, the name of the server dot capacity dot scheduled utilization. And, um, I can go ahead and basically do the same thing for the other uh, servers. So for example, for my second server, which is the oven, I can simply go ahead and type in uh, oven dot capacity dot scheduled utilization. So um, another thing that we can do for, uh, do with uh, responses is that we can define their units. So for example, for the time in system that I have selected here, we know the unit is time and we can um, set the uh, display unit. We can pick hours, seconds, days, weeks, whichever you want. Uh, we can also set objectives for our response uh, values. So for example, uh, you, can, you may want to minimize uh, time and system for your uh, customers in the system. And we can also specify lower and upper bounds for our response uh, parameters. Now, um, the objective lower bound and the upper bound uh, properties uh, are used in Simio add-ins such as the subset selection or some of the um, optimization uh, packages that uh, come with Simio, which we will discuss uh, in future labs. But uh, for now, we don't have any objective or lower or upper bound for our uh, variables. We just uh, set the unit time uh, type for time and system. And for uh, number and system and utilizations, we don't have um, any unit. So I'm going to go ahead and define uh, three more responses for my other three servers. So now that I have my responses defined, I can go ahead and increase my uh, run length 
to 300 hours and add my warm-up period since I'm interested in uh, steady state analysis and I can uh, run my experiments so I'm doing 10 replications and as you can see um, when my model is uh, when my experiment is running I can see the value of my responses in my experiment table now these are the exact same values that you can extract from the pivot grid but uh, instead when you define responses you can you can display these values uh, in in your experiment table but perhaps the most important functionality of um, experiment responses is that they will uh, provide um, access to uh, small plots so as you can see now when we go to response results we can see the small plot uh, for our different uh, responses. So we can see the small plot for time and system, number and system, grid utilization, and so on. So let me go back to my PowerPoint and talk about uh, small plots um, very briefly. So here you can see the different components of uh, small plots. So uh, we can see that um, it not only gives us information about the sample mean. Uh, but it also gives us uh, information about the maximum of our sample and the minimum of our sample. And also, uh, we can see that uh, it gives us information about the lower percentile value and upper percentile value, the median. And uh, also, it gives us uh, information about the confidence interval over our lower percentile, the confidence interval over our, uh, over our um, mean value and the confidence interval over our um, upper percentile uh, value. Uh, Smore plot or basically Simeo Moore plot is based on a paper by um, Barry Nelson which is called the Moore plot displaying measures of risk and error for simulation output and um, I would like to spend a few minutes talk about what we mean by measures of risk and error. So Going back to our um, experiment results, here is the small plot that we have based on 10 replications for our time and system. So um, I can click on the histogram and observations and rotate my um, small plot. So you can see the uh, individual observations, the 10 observations that we had of average time and system from our 10 replications. And you can also see the histogram of our uh, observations which uh, is not very informative. So um, as you can see I have a very wide confidence intervals on my mean and uh, lower percentile and I wasn't able to calculate any confidence interval on my uh, upper percentile. So um, since we are basically uh, in each replication uh, sampling one observation of our random variable which is our time and system uh, we can simply uh, improve our uh, or the accuracy of our um, estimates uh, with uh, running more replications so basically uh, I can go ahead and change my number of reps to 25 so now uh, I pick up from the 10th replication so I'm doing 15 additional ex, uh, replications. Now when I go to my small plot uh, you will see that now I'm able to calculate uh, a confidence interval on my upper percentile and my confidence intervals are shrinking a little bit. So let me actually remove the observations in the histogram and uh, increase my number of replications to 50. So now I'm doing 25 more uh, replications and as my model runs you can see that my confidence intervals um, start to shrink a little bit and this shows that we have uh, full control over our sampling error so basically we can reduce our sampling error which are uh, indicated by the confidence intervals or the width of the confidence intervals in our small plot by basically running more rep replications or uh, in other words uh, sampling more observations so let me actually go ahead and increase my uh, replication number to, uh, to 100 and now when I run my uh, experiment you will see that my confidence intervals 
will even shrink more since I'm reducing my sampling error. The SMORE plot also gives us some information about the risk associated with our, with our um, um, estimate, which are uh, basically indicated by the percentile values, the lower and upper percentile values. So I would like to talk about that in the context of an example that I have uh, developed here. So I would like to go to this Excel file that I have uh, in which we have uh, two samples of size uh, 250. So sample one and sample two both have 250 observations of a random variable in them. And uh, when we actually look at the uh, average values for the two samples, we'll see that the mean for the two samples um, are pretty much the same, very close to one another. Uh, but where we look at the 25th and 75th percentiles, we'll see that they're very different. So um, if we assume that uh, these two samples are observations from two investment options that we have, you can see that the second uh, investment option has more risk associated with it. In other words, in 25% of the times, it is possible that we make less than $112.25 uh, dollars or whatever the units are. And um, also, it's possible to make uh, more than 137 uh, with a chance of 25%. So, but uh, in, the, in the other uh, sample in the first investment option we'll see that the variability is much less so that's basically what we mean by um, uh, by saying that the percentile values give give us some information about the risk so now what i'd like to do is to go back to my model and save it as a different model this time i'm gonna uh, call it passing policy and uh, in this model, what I'm going to do is to allow customers that want cold sandwiches to pass the customers that are waiting for their sandwich to be toasted in the oven. So in order to make this modification, basically I need to do two things. So um, since I don't send these uh, cold customers to the oven anymore, I need to uh, basically update my... Uh, processing time for my oven so it, it will just be the processing time for my uh, hot customers and uh, the next thing I need to do is to add a connector that goes directly from the output node of the bread station to the input node of the veggies station so now when I hit uh, run what happens is Simeo sends 50% of the customers. Let me speed up a little bit here. So it sends 50% of the 50% of the customers uh, to the oven after the first station, and 50% to the veggies. So uh, what I'd like to have is to have 70% here and 30% here. So what I need to do is to click on my connector and then use the selection weight property to. Uh, to implement my logic. So I'm going to uh, change this to 70 and I'm going to click, uh, click on the other connector and select its uh, selection weight to uh, 30%. Now um, Simeo uh, sends 70% of the customers to the oven and 30% uh, go directly to veggies by passing the customers that are waiting uh, in, in the second stage. So now we have implemented the alternative policy of allowing customers to pass uh, uh, those that are waiting in the, uh, in the oven. So here I have opened two instances of the Simeo software package and I have performed the exact same experiment with both models, basically the current policy on the left and the alternative policy, which is the passing policy on the right-hand side. So uh, I can either go ahead and compare my um, average values of my responses in my experiment table, and I can also go to my response results, uh, to my SMORE plots, 
and compare uh, different statistics of my uh, responses. So for example, I have time and system selected for both policies here. And I can go ahead and compare the mean for the two policies. So for the first one, the current policy, it's 9.56. Uh, the average time and system for the uh, alternative policy is 9.52, both in minutes. I can also compare the percentiles. So, for example, the upper percentile for the current policy is 9.78. And the upper percentile of time and system for the alternative policy is 9.72. And similarly, I can compare other uh, statistics, such as the minimum and maximum lower percentiles and median uh, of the two policies using the SMORE plots. Now remember that here we had to open two instances of the SIMU software package to compare the two policies side by side. And in the future we will learn how to use uh, SIMU referenced properties so that we can uh, make comparisons um, all in one place using a single experiment.